streaming live on Facebook. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you for your patience. Um, Just a little behind schedule today. A little behind schedule today. Um, technical difficulties. You know, we internet is great when it works. <laughs> and broadcast. Thank you for your patience. Happy Wednesday. Hope everyone's doing well. My name is Keely Gray with Summit Real Estate. And um, thank you for join, joining our uh, webinar series, Paving Your Way to Home Buying Success. This is the third one we've done. Uh, secrets to Buying Like a Pro, Navigating Our Current Real Estate Market. And today, There's No Place Like Home, Journey to a Successful Closing. And uh, my teammates, Trisha and Isabel, we're going to talk to you ladies, to us ladies are going to talk to you about the steps that it takes to get to a, um, to a successful closing. Um, again, my name is Keely Gray, and I have lived in Summit County for over 20 years. And I've been in real estate with Summit Real Estate only for most of those years. From Iowa originally, I always say it's a great place to be from. Love going back to visit though, absolutely. And uh, I've got three kiddos and my husband and I love raising them here in the mountains. Uh, next, I want to introduce Trisha Moore. Trisha, tell us more about you. Hi guys, I'm Trisha Moore and the baby of the team. I've only been in Colorado for eight years, but love living and playing in the mountains of Summit County. And my husband and I, um, unfortunately, had to share with our families that we're never moving back to Ohio. Um, this is our home from here on out, and it sure has been a fun ride here with Summit Real Estate. Um, I have one little kiddo, and um, she will be three this summer. So it has just been super fun being part of the team. We're lucky to have you, Trisha. We are. Isabel, tell us about you. Hi there. Um, so I've been in Summit County for over 20 years as well. Selling real estate for about 12 on and off, but full time for the last four years at Summit Real Estate. I also have one kiddo who will be 10 um, in a couple of weeks. Crazy going into fifth grade, right? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So thank you for joining us again. Sincerely apologize for the delay. Um, those things happen, right? So thank you for your patience. And if you're just joining us, you if, and if you're on Facebook Live, you can click on the Zoom link below so that you can interact with us during this call. Uh, during this webinar and let us know where you're listening from. Are you here in Summit County? Are you elsewhere in Colorado, different part of the country? What's the weather doing where you are? It's a beautiful day here. We're very lucky. Summer is off to a great start. Uh, if you have any questions, please use the Q&A. Absolutely, we're happy to address any, any questions or concerns that you guys have. We'd also love to know, uh, your current status. Do you own in Summit County? Are you looking to upgrade or downgrade, move somewhere else? Are you looking to move to Summit County uh, as your primary residence? We help, we help everybody with all of those, all of those needs and goals. And at the end of this, please feel free to um, reach out to us to schedule a one-on-one -on -one private buyer consultation. And uh, that will just better help us help you so we can understand your needs and goals, where you're coming from and what you're looking for so that we can get you into the right place when the timing is right for you. So today's topic is journey to a successful closing. And um, Isabel, we are first going to talk about who is on your team. Yes. All right, who's on your team? Um, so let's start with, there we go. Um, who's on your team? So let's start off with Summit Real Estate. Um, 
choosing Summit Real Estate as being part of your team um, is a smart move. Uh, we work as a team and so we work really hard to better ourselves and get you to a um, successful closing. That is our goal. Um, so there's nine gals on the team and um, who all learn from each other and share experiences so that we could always better improve ourselves. Um, one of those very important team members is Margaret Bowes, our transaction coordinator. She is part of our, um, an important part of our team and helps us get to that successful closing. She makes sure that everything stays on track and nothing falls through the cracks with your dates and deadlines. Um, another important aspect of who's working with you and kind of on the sidelines, you won't, um, be in touch with them personally, but the seller and the seller's agent. Our goal is to have everyone at the end of the transaction have a successful one. And so we work very closely with the seller's agent to make sure we're all on the same page and strive to um, have a seamless process for you. Um, let's see, a lender. A lender is the second most important person in the transaction, you wanna make sure that uh, you use a local one. That way we are in close contact with them. And we at some real estate like to say uh, they're within strangling distance if they're local. That way, if we can't get a hold of them or we have questions, we know where they are and how to get a hold of them, um, which is very important. Um, um, Isabel? Do you yes. think that using a local lender um, gives more accountability to the transaction because we know them? A hundred percent, yes. I do agree with that. Um, we are a small community here, so we will run into these lenders at the supermarket or at the Dillon Amphitheater on a Friday concert night series. And so we do see one another and we all strive to work really hard for our clients. Just one more reason to go local, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, another person on your team to make this a successful transaction and closing is the title company. The title company will provide title insurance um, from the seller to the buyer and make sure that it's clear. And Keely will touch base a little bit more on that here in a little bit. And then the last person, um, an important team member, on your side is the inspector. Again, important to choose someone local since they know all the complexes here in the Summit County environment and they have inspected so many places and really know the area. So it's important to choose someone from around here. And Trish will touch some more on that. And a lot of times these inspectors have inspected multiple condos, sometimes even the same condo more than once. Um, over the years. So they really have a good grasp on the, the good things and the bad things about particular areas or particular condo complexes, right? Right. Awesome. Trisha, thank you for that, Isabel. Trisha, show me the money. Love that. Yeah, what, what does that exactly mean? What does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, so as a buyer, you have agreed with the seller on a purchase price, you're officially under contract, but when do you actually need that checkbook? When are you going to be, when do those funds come into play? And pretty quickly, within the first three days, typically you're going to be submitting some earnest money, earnest money, a deposit of funds made um, from the buyer as, a, as evidence of good faith. You're entering into that contract full heartedly. And that is a bit of a representation of such. So within those first three days, you're going to be using that checkbook or transferring some funds from your account. And then really it's, are you a cash buyer or are you getting a loan? And if you're a cash buyer, you're headed just, you're waiting for closing day at that point, getting, getting through the rest of the process. As Isabel mentioned, if you're getting a loan, Hopefully you're using someone local. That would be ideal. 
uh, that really is a huge advantage and they will help you to get through the process as quickly and as smoothly as possible. They'll be chatting with you before you even enter into the contract about how much cash you want to be putting down at closing. Is it 20%? Are you doing more? Are you doing less? What does that look like? And, um, you know, helping you to get to that, the final loan approval. They become your best friend for those 45 days. We say when they call, you need to be answering. No, no sending to voicemail. They are your best friend for those 45 days um, to ensure that you're getting the perfect property for you. Absolutely. Wonderful. Trisha, what about um, cash buyers? Somebody that's going to pay whether it's $200,000 or $2 million for a property and they are paying cash. Does a seller just in good faith believe that the buyer has this kind of money? Sure. Um, no. I mean, I wouldn't, would you? Uh, most of the time people will go ahead and ask for proof of funds, not necessarily your, uh, you know, your bank account information, but showing the statement from your bank, your financial institute that shows that you do have readily available those funds to purchase the property. So we've got, I think the last thing we saw ladies, wasn't it 27% of our buyers or cash buyers here in Summit County? That's a um, lot. It is. Yeah. It's, it's pretty it's a lot significant. Given how um, cheap money is right now also. Right. Yeah, that, that was from April, I do believe. Isabel, you shared that with me. Correct. Yep, just from April. Good. Yeah. So that's the money portion. Yes. Um, so showing a copy of, you know, a statement or a picture of your $100 bills between <laughs> the mattress and the box spring underneath yeah. the pillow. Just some proof of funds might be some, some proof of funds <laughs> or something from your lender. If you're getting a loan saying, yes, you are pre-qualified and right. we're on the way to that final loan approval for you. So awesome. Thank you, Trish. My pleasure. Okay. So I am going to talk about um, reading material to get you Z's. <laughs> uh, not necessarily a glamorous topic, but so very, very important for a buyer to do your due diligence. You want to know exactly what you are getting into, whether it's a single family home with an HOA or without, or a condo complex that's going to have um, multiple rules and regulations that really you need to abide by. Uh, it is our job to provide you with this information via the title company, via the seller and their property disclosures. Um, and it's our job to help you hold up your end of the deal, to make sure that you are getting the information that you need and that you are responding to it, responding to any deadlines within the time frame that has been laid out in the contract. So as your broker, we do that. And Margaret does that as well, our transaction coordinator. We're all on the same team and we make sure that you're holding up your end of the deal. Uh, the title commitment is one of the first things that you will get from the title company. And what this is, is um, we have engaged within the contract, we have engaged a particular title company. Uh, we've got several we know and love here locally that do a fantastic job. And we engage them to handle the entire transaction from contract to post-closing, really. And their job is to search public records at the county courthouse to make sure that if John Doe says he owns this property, this condo, they're searching public records to make sure that he really does own it. And not only does John Doe own it, but is it John Doe LLC or... Um, the non-revocable trust of John Doe and da, 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 da. So even small nuances like that, the title company, they make sure that title is being transferred um, properly. And are there any liens on the property? Um, at the closing table, anything that the seller owes, uh, not only you know their loan paying off 
their mortgage, but also are they behind on their homeowners association dues? Hopefully not. Are property mm -hmm. taxes paid in full. Uh, if they've done any work on the property, remodeling, um, electrician, and they haven't paid that contractor, the contractor can put what we call a mechanics lien on the property. And the property cannot transfer to a new owner until those liens are paid off. So the title company is very, very important in getting all of that research done. Mm -hmm. um, and we will help navigate your way through the title commitment also. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of legalese and it's important to click every single blue hyperlink in there just so you know exactly what you're getting into. Uh, another way to know exactly what you're getting into is reviewing the homeowners association documents. And uh, this is something that we can provide you access to typically before you even make an offer and decide what property you want to be in, which one is best for you. Uh, reviewing the rules and regulations. Uh, what is the pet policy? In Summit County, uh, most homeowners are allowed to have pets. Renters and guests of owners typically are not allowed. Sometimes there might be a restriction on the number of pets you can have. Somebody with five dogs wants to know that. That's important to know from the get-go. Uh, besides pets, parking. Do you have assigned parking? Do you have unassigned parking? Um, what, do the, what does the parking situation look like? Rentals, that's a really big deal right now. Um, are short-term rentals allowed? That's, it's, we cannot assume that they are allowed mm -hmm. in every neighborhood or every condo complex under 30 days. Um, financials, this is important information in um, determining what type of homeowners association are you buying into? Do they, do they have a budget that they're following? And are they scraping by or are they building up capital reserves in order to fund future, future projects, future capital improvements, uh, whether that's a new roof or a new siding or the clubhouse needs a new hot tub, landscaping, uh, things that are affecting the common area. Um, your lender is also going to review the, the financials and the budget and make sure that their investment in this property is sound as well. Um, another good way to know if there are any capital improvements on the horizon is reading the Homeowners Association minutes. Uh, it can give you really good insight into what is on the horizon? What are they talking about? Um, whether it's good or bad, you know, what are the homeowners and what are the board of directors talking about? We also recommend speaking with the property manager and one of the board members just to, you know, introduce yourself and start the relationship because it is a relationship with the other owners. Um, and their, you know, their view on the pros and cons and, uh, I'm sure they'd be well, um, happy to welcome you to the neighborhood, right? Yes. Um, let's see. Any other due diligence documents uh, could potentially be if there's a lease in place, whether it's a short-term lease with the local property management company and uh, they need to fulfill the contract and you have to assume that lease you wanna know exactly what you're getting into. Or if it's a long-term lease that doesn't end for a few months and you are assuming that lease is the new homeowner, are you okay with that? What does that look like? Um, all of these things need to be looked at. If you're buying a, a vacant land or a single family home or a duplex, getting a survey or an improvement location certificate is extremely important in knowing exactly what you are buying. What are your boundaries? And are the neighbors encroaching onto your, your land at all? Whether it's a fence, um, a shed, a driveway, a rock wall, a play set, whatever it might be, and vice versa. Are any of the things on your land encroaching onto the neighbors? 
Um, this is important because you want to know what you're buying. You want to know what your boundaries are. And we want to deal with it now. Keely, yes. what if a buyer doesn't want to get a survey or an ILC? Um, I think that it is well worth the money and we have negotiated in the contract who's paying for that, whether it's the buyer or the seller. And you want to know what you're buying. And if there are any encroachments or easements, maybe there's a trail easement. And, you know, right now the property is covered in snow. Well, not right now, but let's say you're buying in the middle of winter um, and there's a trail easement and you didn't know that there could be a lot of people walking through the back corner of your yard access. Those are things that are really important to know. And sometimes your lender and the title company might require a survey to be done. It's, it's a good idea. It's an investment in your investment, knowing exactly what you're buying. And then um, another due diligence document uh, is property insurance. Well, it's not really a document, but it's one of your deadlines. And this isn't something that needs to be proved to us as your broker, but your lender, if you are getting a loan, will require that you have adequate homeowner's insurance. If it's a condo complex, the homeowner's association, part of your dues are going towards um, paying for property insurance for the exterior and all of the common areas. So your personal insurance policy is going to be the walls in and all of your contents. Now is a really good time to shop around. If you haven't done that in a while, when you're purchasing a property, it's a good time to see if anybody else out there can give you um, a better bundle, a better option, better rates. Um, and if you don't have, you know, an insurance provider that. Uh, that you enjoy working with, because again, this, you know, cars, autos, homes, second homes, it, it's a long-term relationship. Uh, we'd be happy to give you some local recommendations. So um, that's kind of a recap on, or an insight into the sometimes boring and not very <laughs> glamorous information that you need to read and make sure that you are comfortable with because it's all super important. All of that is extremely important. It is, it, it truly is. It really As is. is the condition of the home itself. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about the inspection. Okay. Um, truly, I think sometimes people are tempted to say like, I'm just gonna have my uncle Bob look at her. I'm, I have a really good eye for these things. And we highly recommend that you have a professional come out and take a look at your property that you're investing in. Um, there are three dates associated with that. I know Keely's talked about a lot of the, the dates and the deadlines that are gonna be in the contract. And when you hit the inspection dates, there are three of them. There's an objection, there is a resolution, and then you've got a termination deadline if needed. So your objection comes into play after your professional inspector has gone out, he's inspected the property and provided you a report. And at this point, you're gonna sit down with your broker and you're going to run through each of these items and decide which of these are health and safety issues that are concerning to you. And which of these are potentially just cosmetic things, because if you're not buying a brand new home, you're going to run into that, right? So we like to use the example of a deck. It, does the deck need to be stained? Does the deck need a fresh paint of coat or a fresh coat of paint, excuse me? Uh, or is it maybe that it's not structurally sound? What's, what's going on here? And can we separate the cosmetic from the health and safety issues? Because that's really what you're focusing on for this inspection period, right? Yes, absolutely. And there is a big difference between cosmetic and health and safety. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And then deciding what you're going to put as your requests to the seller in that inspection objection. You're objecting to the following things and this is how you would like them to be addressed. This is who you would like 
you know, do you want them to be repaired, replaced, by when? And that's where we come in and um, help you to sift through it all and um, navigate through getting that prepared and submitting it. And and then, you know, really, um, it's a yes, they, they might address all those things. They might address a few. They might want to give you a credit or they may say, no, we want to, we don't want to do any of that. So that's um, just kind of, you're relying on your uh, broker as, as the expert to help you through that. Right. Thank you. Um, this is the inspection period is a time of negotiating potentially. Mm -hmm. How do you see those negotiations go most of the time? How do we see them go? Well, you know, as Isabel said, we're all, <laughs> yeah, we're all kind of there. There's likely to be a, a bit of back and forth. Uh, as I said, they, um, the seller may just agree and say, you know what, we had no idea that that was going on. You know, we've lived here and we just didn't realize. And yes, we would love to get that taken care of. Or they may say, no, that's not something we're interested in. You know, there is um, some negotiating back and forth here within this portion of the whole transaction more than likely anywhere else um, outside of the initial, we need to come to a purchase price. You know, we, before you're even under contract, there's, there's certainly lots of negotiating there as well. So I'd say that this is the, the portion of the transaction where a lot of negotiating does happen and you just rely on your broker uh, for their expertise. Awesome, thank you. Um, I would also add that um, what you ask for in an inspection objection notice can sometimes be, and with our guidance, um, based on the price that you're under contract for. Absolutely. So let's say the seller came down significantly from their list price, and um, you might not have as much wiggle room mm -hmm. with asking for inspection items. Uh, if you pay point. list price or over list price, uh, you might have a little bit more flexibility with asking some of those things. Mm -hmm. but if you're in a multiple offer situation and you get the property, um, the seller most likely would say no to any of your requests because they have a line of buyers that uh, would be ready, willing, and able to move forward with the property, potentially in the condition that it's in. Right? Is it a buyer's market? Is it a seller's market? What, what are the you know, those outside factors that yes. can really make a difference? Absolutely, All those play into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, lots of nuances, mm -hmm. and that's why you know the uh, the seller's agent being a part of our team is so true because us as the brokers are communicating all of these things with the other broker, and it's right. important for us to have a good open communicative relationship as well. Yes. If you're watching on Facebook Live, feel free to click the Zoom link below um, in the comments that will allow you to um, just jump on the call through Zoom and be able to engage with us, interact, chat, ask questions, let us know where you're watching from, listening from. Um, how did you hear about this webinar today? Was it on Facebook? Was it uh, through Summit Real Estate's advertising? Um, what topic would you like to hear about next time? Mm -hmm. We've discussed, so the, the title of our series is Paving Your Way to Home Buying Success and uh, Secrets to Buying Like a Pro, Navigating uh, the Current Market During COVID. In this one, There's No Place Like Home, Journey to a Successful Closing. So we would love to hear from you. We would love the opportunity. It's really an opportunity to sit down or Zoom virtually one-on-one -on -one, uh, to have a personal buyer consultation so that we can really get to know you and what your needs are and what your dreams and goals are and truly what you are looking for so that we can, um, we can help you, help you get you where you want to go. Our team of real estate matchmakers will help yes. get you there. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay. Isabel, you are going to talk to us about a very, very exciting day 
you're you finally got your sweet home in Colorado closing day what does that, what does that look like the home well, stretch home stretch I know right we've made it yay congrats um so what that looks like, we like to schedule a walkthrough either right before signing documents or kind of the day before. And what a walkthrough is for is to make sure that the property is in the same condition as when you wrote the offer um, to make sure it's still there and standing. Any items that were negotiated in the inspection that Trish talked about, we wanna make sure that those were completed so we'll look out for that. And then any items that we negotiated under personal property um, and that addendum, we make sure that they're on site for you for after signing. Um, what does signing look like right now? And I'm kind of going to bring COVID-19 into this one because things are a little different right now. The title companies are doing something called curbside closing. And what that entails is they will email you all your closing documents 24 hours prior to signing. That way, if you have any questions for the title company or the lender or us, um, we can get all those questions answered for you prior to signing. That way you could just zip off to the title company, sign your documents, whether it's in your car or right out their door and be on your way. It's also really important to make sure if you are wiring funds to get that set up for the day before. Um, since Colorado is a keys for cash state, we need to make sure all funds are at the title office when you're done signing so that we can hand over the keys to your place. Um, Isabel, the funds that uh, you as the buyer are required to bring um, on closing day or prior to closing day, that would be your cash at closing, your down payment amount less the earnest money, right? And the lender Correct. is in charge of the, yes. um, the bulk of the funds to purchase the property, typically. Correct. So yeah, we're in contact with them too to make sure that they get their funds off uh, prior to that signing time as well so that they're all there ready. Okay. Um, what else do you bring on closing day besides your writing? Dri and <laughs> your driver's license. Um, so they're... I, they won't take a physical copy at that moment um, just to avoid less uh, paper handling, but you'll either take a picture and email it or text it to them so that they have it on file. And then we'll bring you champagne. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That is so true. Um, um, and so um, closing day. So once you've signed all your documents, you are free to move in. And hopefully at that point in time, you have uh, reserved your spot to use the moving truck for that day and the day after to get your stuff there. One of the many, many benefits of using Summit Real Estate is our box truck is available, um, is available to you. Anything else about the closing day? Time to celebrate. Time Let's to have celebrate. that barbecue in the backyard. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, I would like to add that our relationship between us as brokers and buyers and sellers as customers does not end on closing day. It does not end at the closing table. Uh, we are here for you uh, to answer any questions that you have. Um, is something amiss? Something's not right with the property? Uh, you just moved here from out of state. Who's your doctor? Who's your dentist? Where do you get your hair done? Who mm -hmm. does the best nails in town? Who has the best happy hour? All of those local insights, um, we are happy to share. And we really pride ourselves on our clients becoming friends of ours because it is a small community and we do see each other, like Isabel said, you know, at the supermarket and on the trails and at the tiki bar. So um, we really are continuing the relationship after closing and we are here for whatever, whatever you may need. Truly. I love that the relationship does not end. No, it's kind of just the beginning really. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> um, okay. Appreciate everybody joining us today. So sorry for the 10 minute delay. Don't know what was going on, but uh, we made it on here and truly hope that we have provided some va valuable information. Um, it's our goal to just 
let you know how, what buying and selling real estate looks like right now in Summit County. Um, before COVID, during COVID, after COVID, uh, we're here to help and um, would love to schedule a time to chat virtually or in person. Um, real estate showings don't look the same as they used to. Masks, gloves, disinfecting, um, but we are all getting very used to how that works, right? Right. Yeah. Um, something else, stay tuned. Uh, we are, Summit Real Estate is looking at doing a uh, donation drive um, on Saturday, June 20th from nine till one. All the details aren't quite worked out yet, but a way to provide um, a valuable service to the community. Right now, uh, the, we would typically donate uh, clothes, um, books, toys, things like that to um, FERC, Family and Intercultural Resource Center. And because of COVID, they have not been open for a long time. So we know that all of us, well, maybe we haven't had as much time as we would like to go through the <laughs> closets and drawers and clean things out, but a lot of people have. And it's just kind of, I think Trish, you said yours is in the back of, back of the truck and just waiting. Like waiting for FERC to open. So we are um, hoping that we can uh, get a lot of people to bring in their bags of gently used items that we can donate hopefully to FERC, if not to FERC, then we're gonna drive them down in our box truck and donate everything um, to an organization in Denver. So we hope that will be helpful in just getting those things out of your hair. So stay tuned um, for more information on that, but we're looking at Saturday, June 20th. So go clean out a closet. Yeah. Spring cleaning. <laughs> Spring cleaning, yes. Yeah. Okay, ladies, anything else that you would like to share or say? I would just say, feel free to comment if you have suggestions for future topics because we are here to help and would love to know what's on your mind. Yes. And just thank you so much for your time and listening in. Yes. We really do appreciate it. Happy Wednesday. Happy Go out Wednesday. and enjoy the sunshine. And uh, we hope to hear from you soon. Thanks everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.